Can you guys see if I turn the lights off? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, we'll start at uh, uh, online business services. Okay, let's start at BBC. Okay, uh, with the uh, BBC, sometimes on um, iPlayer or on 4OD, after say a week or a month, the file is no longer playable. Can someone remember what they use in order to stop you from playing after a month or a week? April. DRM. It's DRM, yeah. So off uh, BBC iPlayer and 4 OD, you might have DRM, which is a form of um, digital rights management. Management. You might also have something else where um, they limit where you can play it. So say for example you're on holiday in America but you really want to catch up on that series 3 of Luther or whatever you're watching or Sherlock then um, you won't be able to watch it because they'll say that you're outside a certain region. What kind of filtering? How are they filtering that as they know you're in America? What is it that gives it away? What is that called? GPS. Not GPS. It's like... Is it IP? It is IP, yeah. So you might have something called IP filtering. Madison, you can just write this in. So IP filtering, because every single computer on the internet has an IP address, yes, an IP number, an IP address, they know exactly where you are, whether you're in London or actually your exact house address based on your IP. And that's how the police sometimes will use your IP address to find out crimes being committed. And also, it's used for... Um, your like, iPlayer and 4 d as well. It stands for Internet Protocol Address. Do you need to know that? No, you just need to know what it is. As long as when you see an IP address, you realise, ah, that's to do with Internet Protocol Address, that's someone's address on the internet. And we can also do filtering. It's kind of dangerous. It is, but in a way there needs to be some kind of accountability. And also, if every single computer had, had the same number, then you would never be able to tell who's who. So you kind of need an IP address, don't you? It's like a phone number, kind of, yeah. To block. So you can do IP filtering or blocking, and that means that when you're watching 4OD in America, or iPlayer for America, it won't let you do it, because it filters the IP. Wait, who does that? Um, the companies, like BBC iPlayer or 4OD as well. Yeah? Okay, um, this here, what is this called, this kind of barcode, this one in the middle? It's used a lot on like, posters these days, Ella? Okay, you can scan it with a smartphone, but what is it called, this barcode? QR code, good. Did you just say that, Madison? Is that what you said? I said a barcode. Okay, so it's a QR code. And when you scan that, as Ella said, um, what you're going to get is it's going to take you to a web page that's a quicker way than writing out a full web address. Everyone knows that the school web address, say harvestschool.com, is quite long. Whereas if you had a QR code, you could just scan it, and then it would take you there quite quickly. Oh, is that the thing on the QR tube? reader? Yeah, on the tubes, on lots of posters as well. You might have that as well. Anyways. Um, other things then are, let's see, online goods and services. eBay though. In order to pay on eBay, you've got like a few ways of paying. What are the ways of paying? PayPal, good. And PayPal is an example of what? Um, Rebecca, PayPal is an example of what? A third one. Good, good, good. So on eBay we might use PayPal, thank you, Edison. and it's an example of third party payment. Aziza, why might we use a third party payment system? Why don't we just use our credit card? Okay, you don't enter your details, it's safer. What else? Why is it more convenient? Well, yeah. um, it is online, um, I guess that's one way that's more convenient, but another way that's more convenient, like all yeah, online yeah. chats. If something goes wrong, there's protection. Something else, there's either. Yeah, good. You only enter your, your details once. You don't have to enter it like five or six times. So you enter your account details once, and then after that, you just keep on entering your email address and password and that's all. Do you not have a pen? No, I've got some bracelets. Oh, I see. So 
this off. Okay. Um, right, so that's eBay cover frog. Frog is an example of what we call a VLE. Oh, there it is. VLE. So it's a virtual yeah, learning environment. Now, Marlebone is very young on this kind of front, so we've only just started using it. And obviously we didn't really spend that much time with year 11 using Frog because you're leaving anyway. But what might you think are the benefits of having all your files all linked online? Sorry, to interrupt you. You haven't seen Miss Connor have you? She's in a 14 or 15. 14 or 15. Yeah, yeah, sure. What's the benefit? Rather than going through, say, like, um, webmail access or that kind of stuff or having a USB stick, why might schools want to use a VLE? It's in one place. Good, so all your files are in one place. Um, teachers can upload their lessons there. So it's accessible to everyone? Um, not everyone. It's accessible to everyone in the school. So that's another advantage because you might not want everyone to know about what's going on in your school. So say like sports day, you might not want like, the public to know where your sports day is, who won and stuff. So it's very selective. So everyone in a company? Yeah, everyone in a school. Because a VLE is only for a school. Yeah, so VLE is generally for a school or a, a university, a learning environment is for a school. Um, it also allows you to kind of monitor what's going on. Students can have discussions on that, so they can have that forum going on as well. So generally quite positive things. Obviously there's some negative things as well. Um, say for example, it might actually take more time to build a VLE and they cost money as well. These VLEs, they're not free, are they? Yeah? So that's like a disadvantage. And back to, um, this is Call of Duty, is an online game that some of um, your friends yeah, make. Yeah, online. Oh, uh, well not actually online, but people connect to it. Yeah, yeah, so is it on Xbox 360 or? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so people can play with each other online. What would you need in terms Wi-Fi? Of... So you might need Wi-Fi or an internet connection, but in terms of the quality of the internet connection, what would it need to be? It would need to have... 3G. High what? 4G. Resolution edge. Not high, high resolution. Bandwidth. Okay, we're just tracking down now. So we need high bandwidth. Oh. I'm looking for some paper to leave for. What's bandwidth? Okay, let me talk through this one. Right, so... Yes. Right, okay, so you need high bandwidth. Right, um, it's easy. Do you want to explain to me what bandwidth is, please? Okay, so it's the maximum amount that you can download in a second. So if you've got a high bandwidth, the maximum bandwidth is very high, then obviously your game's going to run very, very smooth. If you've got loads of people sharing that bandwidth because you've got a wireless connection or a shared connection, then your bandwidth is going to be divided and a bit slower, yeah. I read that like, it varies from area to area. It will do, yeah. Isn't that a like fact? Some, so some places will have um, like cable connections that we have, and they're just like kind of copper cable. Other places will have fiber optic, and universities generally have the fastest connections. So universities will have a much faster connection. I mean, it's slightly unfair, but so if not, you, yeah. It's not about where you're located. It's about like what kind of connection. You kind of, yeah. It's like where you live. So on your street, you might have fiber optic, or if you're at a university or at a university, you're going to get a much quicker connection. The other thing we need, we might have a huge bandwidth, so we might be operating at say, I don't know, a gigabit per second. Let's just. Be hypothetical here, so gigabit or gigabit per second. You might have a really fast line, but something might slow it down. What do we call it? The time taken oh, latency. is latency. Good. Yeah, so what yeah. we're aiming for as well, we want low latency. Latency is a time taken from a signal to get across a network. So it's from the moment you press enter to the moment it's received at the other end. So ideally you want low latency. If your latency is high, then you're going to get a lag and a delay, and your game is going to stutter, or your video is going to buffer. So really, for Call of Duty games like this, 
you want low latency. Yeah, so you want low delays and a really fast time. So in terms of latency, you probably want something like, I don't know, 0.5 milliseconds, rather than say 3 milliseconds, which is quite a long time to wait for a delay, yeah? Are you okay? Right, um, in terms of online as a service and this online gaming, and Ilda, if we played games for say two or three hours non-stop, what might be the possible health risks? Eyes. Sorry? Eyesight. So, eyesight, would your eyesight deteriorate or what do you call that? Eye box. Eye strain. So you might get eye strain or you might get something called RSI. Yeah, yeah. Well, in your, so you might get RSI, and, or you might get eye strain. Sorry? Uh, just on the game as well, so this is playing it for like several hours as well. Okay, this screen here, can someone tell me what's uh, drastically wrong or what's happening on this screen down here in the bottom right? What's going on? April. Um, it could be phishing. So say for example this pop-up here, if we clicked on it, it might try and get your details and so that would be a fake website. So it could be phishing, Ella? Mm -hmm. They're pop-ups, okay. And how about the pop-ups have gotten there in the first place, Rebecca? I don't know, but I know they are actually. Okay, you're on the point then? Um, April? Um, sometimes they might come from emails, but generally it might be because you have some kind of spyware installed on your computer, yeah? So it might be because of spyware, Nora, yeah? I'm confused like between spyware and viruses and... Okay, so we'll cover like the three things. So cookies, like they're all quite um, what we call covert. We don't see them, but they're there. Some of them are legal, some of them are legal. So cookies just remembers your passwords. It remembers what pages you go on. It does, we'll cover that as we go along. So say for example I go to msn.com and I'm going to log into my um, very, very old email address. Even if I didn't, and this is kind of revealing what I've been looking at online, because all the adverts on the side will be tailor-made um, based on what I've been looking at. So we just cancel this. Okay, so say for example I'm not yet logged in. It's coming up with stuff like fruit, I've done fat. I'm not sure I've been looking at fruit. If I actually log in, then the adverts will be tailored to what I've been looking at. Because the cookies remember what websites I've been on, and then it will tailor that to my login. Um, How does it remember you on? Using a cookie. So it's a text file. It remembers um, what your password is. It remembers what websites you've been on. It records it on your own computer. So it's yeah. not recorded on anyone else's computer. Only on your own. Uh, okay, cool. So, and then we're going to go on a really old email as well. As I said, I've got like 1591 Yeah, I don't think I've been looking at rainfalls that much. This is like getting really embarrassing, isn't it? Uh, but, let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look at the teacher sat for smoking, etc. Let's just have a look at this NUT thing. On the right, then, I've got this thing um, about SIM card. Because as you, well, some of you know, I lost my phone, I left in the hotel the weekend. So me and Mr. Sam have kind of been like brainstorming, thinking about what new phone I should get if my phone doesn't get returned. Um, and so that advert is tailored to... Um, have you decided? Not really. I'm hoping they return it. I mean, it's only a £20 pound phone, but I quite like my old Tom yeah. So um, anyway, um, that advert is tailored to me because cookies remember it. Spyware is something else. Spyware is something that, like a cookie, happens behind the scenes, you don't know it's doing it. It's recording what you're going on, it records like, it might record keystrokes, it might log all the keys you're pressing, and then that would result in things like pop-ups. Now this isn't a pop-up, that's not very annoying, right? It's just at the side, no one really cares. But this, on here, when I'm getting all these pop-ups, that might be spyware, that's going to slow my computer down a lot. Um, that would be anti-spyware. Like anti-virus. Yeah. Oh. Stop your computer getting viruses. So, no so you shouldn't write virus software is going to help your computer, but anti-virus software will help protect you. So that those pop-ups spyware. Yeah, they were. They could be due to spyware. Another key difference between cookies and spyware is cookies is left on your computer, 
whereas spyware, the information is being sent back to someone to use in some way. So cookies good? Cookies can have benefits. For example, you don't need to type in your username and password all the time. And so cookies remember stuff? They remember stuff for you if you want them to, that's useful. And the second reason is you get adverts more tailored to things you're interested in. Yeah? Yeah. You might not be interested in anti-wrinkle cream, but you might be interested in the latest fashion that you've been searching earlier. Yeah. No, right, yeah. Why would the people who put the fiber, like who sent me the fiber over it, like who infected your computer, like, they get money for it, so if every single time they show their advert, they can say, oh, we've got 10 people to view, we've got 1,000 people to view, every single time a pop-up occurs, they can charge that company money. And sometimes, as April said, it might be phishing as well, so when you click on it, they might be trying to get your personal details as well. So there's loads of different scams running there. The last one is a virus. A virus, generally, you get from either emails, downloading like dodgy or pirate MP3s, or um, you might get it from a memory stick as well. Viruses would just delete or modify files. They wouldn't necessarily cause like loads of pop-ups. They just destroy files or delete files on your computer. The intention behind them is purely just malicious, just to cause havoc. Really. Yeah, there's, so there's they're no quite business, business. There's no business incentive behind the virus. Why would they exist? It's a bit like graffiti, like. I mean, graffiti some argue is an art form, but you'll say it's like quite destructive. So the virus is like that kind of thing. It's kind of like saying, why does war exist? Yeah. 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 Or they think it's a power trip, like they think we can affect this many people just on our keyboard. So it's quite an empowering thing, I guess. But who controls viruses? Well, people actually did it. Yeah. Well, people make viruses, yeah. Really? So our computer doesn't just do it? No. Um, so other thing is, so. so why would they do that? Okay, so let's address Rebecca's issue then. If she had an antivirus, that might pick up some of her virus and might clean it up as well. But what other piece of so software could Rebecca have in order to prevent viruses? Firewall. Firewall, good. Because that would control the traffic going in and out of your computer, the internet traffic and going in and out of your computer. So that might also help prevent viruses as well. If I'm a hacker and I wanted to go straight into Rebecca's internet connection, if she had a firewall, that would block me going in. Whereas if she doesn't have a firewall, it's quite open for me to go in and see what's on her computer. Uh, good. HTTPS then. 
and just means the website is secure. So it's a secure login as well. Yeah. So HTTPS is another way of knowing that website is secure. In the address bar, it might say HTTPS. Yeah, before the www. Dot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not secure. So it could be when you log in, that means anyone can see your data. It's not really safe. Yeah. Um, like say for example, you go to. Can somebody just put the HTTP thing in their web address? Not really. So this, for example, I've logged into Hotmail and I haven't used HTTPS, so that's not very safe of me. Yeah. So that's not a secure site. So yeah, but there's no S, so that's not secure. Yeah. There's no S, so it's not Yeah, so this, at the moment, this could be viewed by anyone. It's not really secure. Only with the S when you have the secure certificate. Nothing changes on here, it just says it has a secure um, the certificate is kind of like a signature to prove that something is secure. So if there isn't a certificate, a secure certificate, then it might not be official either. But now you can see that this has gone green, it's got HTTPS, and you see the padlock up here as well. So there's all this kind of added security. Um, in terms of online booking though, um, why might you get an account in Elder? Why might we have an account online? What might be the benefits of that? Good. You don't have to put your details in again. Other benefits, please, of having an online account. What else might we be able to get? Or what might we set that up? You can manage it anywhere. Um, I guess you can manage it anywhere, but this is um, an online account for flights. So let's think about, in terms of flight booking, what might they be sending you, or what might you be getting? If you... So you might get what via email? You get your ticket via email, and Aziza? Yeah, they might send you offers and say like loyalty rewards. So you might be the first to know if the price changes on like a certain flight that you're always using. Or it might be um, say like a um, special loyalty program as well. I was going right. to say also it can keep a record of maybe your past history. So I order on Amazon a lot. I can see all my past orders. And it, that might help me if I need to see how much I paid for something in the past or track some of my spending. I can do that as well. Okay, topic five. And have we covered YouTube much or we haven't, have we? No. Okay, so what could we put under YouTube? Okay. Um, plus, uh, yeah, so we could talk about copyright. When you upload something onto the internet, um, you can choose what kind of license the video is, so, or if you're watching a video on YouTube. And um, you can't copy it because of copyright. What's the law called that protects things from copyright? What is that? There's two laws which would protect it. Copyright Protection Act. So there's Copyright Act and there's Data Protection Act. Uh, there's two. <laughs> Don't have another. No, copyright Designs and Patents. Yeah, sorry, Copyright Designs and Patents. Data. And then also you've got... Data Protection Act as well. If you're... Um, this is just a recap from the previous session then. If you're um, viewing YouTube wirelessly on a 3G device, what are the three things that might affect the signal quality? So you're on a wireless device, like your mobile phone, your tablet, and you're watching um, YouTube. Okay, interference might be one thing that affects the signal quality. Anything else, please? Another thing that might affect the signal quality. So underground, so you might have a physical obstruction. So if you go under a tunnel, you're watching on the train. And then April. The last one is, yeah? Yeah, it's a distance from the receiver as well. So if you're getting it from a hotspot, that would be Wi-Fi, not really 3G. Then it might be the distance from it. But same with like the distance or connectivity with the satellite as well. And the other thing with YouTube, um, what do we call it when we control the comments on YouTube? Like deleting comments is with M. 
So what do we call Wondering. a person? Um, not fire. I have a question. Uh, Wondering. 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 W
prevents things getting in and out. Wait, yeah. so did you say open source software where anyone can modify it? Anyone can modify it, yeah. It's a bit like Wikipedia, but it's a piece of software. So the code is open and anyone can modify it, change it, improve it. So how, how well. can you change software? Like, say, for example, on Firefox, someone wants to um, make a plugin, like a little button, which means you can download YouTube videos. They make that open, so people can make a plugin to do that. Say someone wants to make a plugin where you press a button and it PDFs the page, anyone can do that. They can open the code and do it. No matter how. Adware and spyware. Okay. Adware is specifically designed at just stopping adverts showing up on your page or advert pop up. What is that? So Adware is specifically designed just to stop adverts appearing on your page. So Mr. Lau showed you some examples of when he logged into his Hotmail account and he had a big advert on the side. If you had anti-adware software, then that would stop those adverts from coming up or stop pop-ups in the form of advertising. Whereas spyware is software which is sending back or recording activity that you're doing and tracking. April, at the top right you see a picture of um, Skype. What kind of technology is it? <coughs> good, so this is uh, VOIP. So you're not going to fail, you're going to do good. So VOIP, um, which is voice over internet protocol. What are the advantages of VOIP compared to, say, doing a long distance phone call, please, Rebecca? Um, it's not necessary. You start to pay for something, don't you? What are you paying for? Internet. So it's not entirely free, it's a lot cheaper because uh, you don't pay for the call, you just pay for your internet. So I'd say it's a lot cheaper because you don't actually pay for the call, you just pay for the internet. Good. You get to see them as well. Yeah, I guess you get to see them as well. You know, it's a type of video conference. Remember, if they're only asking you a question on, um, on voice, uh, that's only voice over IP, yeah? So don't answer about video facilities, they're only talking about the voice aspect of it. So just voice call. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Mr. Lau might have already mentioned this, but you should never give answers like free or cheaper. You won't get them. You, you need to justify it. it. So, as Mr. Lau said earlier, cheaper as you only pay for the internet access. That will get you a mark. Whereas if you just said cheaper, you wouldn't get your mark. So explain it if you're going to say cheaper, easier, faster, quicker. Can anyone help her? What's another advantage of VOIP? What devices can you use it on? Computer. You can use it on your phone or on your computer. Um, so yeah, you can use VOIP actually on your phone to make cheaper calls as well. That would be fine, so some people do that. So if um, Mr. Lau has a business, another advantage you could see that he could travel anywhere in the world and still receive his calls, couldn't he? Without having to pay roaming fees. Okay, but if, if he was in another country, as long as he had Wi-Fi access, he could still answer his Skype course. Okay. okay, if you all um, just look at this orange button here, this orange button is um, it stands for RSS, um, and I want someone to try and explain to us what RSS is and why it exists. So, what is RSS, please? Um, as easy, can you explain RSS? To Okay, so give an example of that. Rather than you going to a website checking for updates, it will send the updates to you as you subscribe. So give me an example of when you might use RSS. An example of a website. Good. So news or weather, yeah. So rather than checking BBC every five minutes to check out what's going on in London, you could just have an RSS feed subscribe, and as new news, new news, as news is coming in, then it will just update it. Yeah, so it would automatically send a feed. So effectively, what Twitter is, it's kind of like it's modelled on RSS. You don't go to other people's blogs because you could be checking a hundred blogs. Rather, you wait for them to publish something, and you subscribe to them, you follow them, and that all comes to your computer. So RSS which stands for really simple syndication, you don't need to know that, but really simple syndication, it's a way of you subscribing to stuff. Rebecca, you have a question? No. no. Really simple syndication. 
Tumblr and on, say, Flickr especially.